So we're joined here by Noel Ginsburg, a businessman from Denver, longtime civic leader, running for governor. You said a long time ago you were interested in this. Now the field is kind of crowded out around you. So let's take a look here in the Democratic primary. You've got Cong Congressman Ed Perlmutter, former state senator Mike Johnson. You've got former state treasurer Kerry Kennedy. What's that field missing? Well, I think what it's missing is someone that doesn't come directly out of politics from an elected office. And my history of running a business for 37 years, as well as being deeply involved in the community, kind of sets me apart from that, as well as how I think how I would attack what I think are some great issues or challenges that the state will face. Let's talk about the business issue. Your background is in business for decades. When President Trump, then candidate Trump, said that the government should be run like a business, I heard his liberal critics say government can't and should not be run like a business. What do you think? Well, I think the truth is that government is not simply like business and that you can't just walk in and expect that the same principles that work in business to apply in government. However, there are many things that do. And recognizing that at the end of the day, if the revenue coming in from taxes doesn't match the, the expenses, then you have deficits, which we can't have in this state. So how you make sure that the investments we make and the dollars we spend in government actually have the highest return for the taxpayer and our citizens. And you get that from business perspective. At the same time, you're dealing with the legislature. You're dealing with social issues that are very different than what happens in business. In my experience running some of the largest nonprofits in the state, starting nonprofit organizations, I think uniquely position me different than the other candidates. What does your business expertise tell you is a much bigger problem than Coloradans realize right now and what's your proposed solution? I think one of the biggest problems we have, and I would call it part of this, the foundation of the state, is our infrastructure. And although it costs money to fix, repair, and grow, the reality of it is it has a return. CDOT and McKinsey did a study that said not doing what we're doing uh, not investing in our roads cost $1.2 billion. So if the legislature would have allocated the dollars and allowed us to vote for that infrastructure, we would have had a choice to spend maybe $600 million or $700 million to save $1.2 billion. If we continue to ignore these infrastructure costs in the state, it will only get worse and even more expensive. So let's talk about the fix. There are conservatives that are floating a plan that say you can just reallocate dollars and not increase taxes. Do taxes need to be increased somewhere to pay for big time infrastructure? I believe they do. In a state where we fund public education, 48th out of 50 states, to say that in some way we're gonna be re able to reallocate dollars, I think is just a figment of someone's imagination. We have some districts in the state in rural Colorado that operate four days a week because they can't operate five. I believe if we could reallocate money Today, we would have done it to make sure those schools remained open five days a week. Smartest tax to raise? Is it a gasoline tax? Is it a sales tax? I believe it's a, some form of a sales tax. A gasoline tax, honestly, is going to continue to be reduced over time as gas mileage goes up and more of us, I drive an electric car. I pay zero for the roads that I drive on. That's not right. So I think you have to do a different form of tax. Let's look big picture. If elected governor, where do you think that you could work with the Trump administration? Well, I would be happy to work with the Trump administration in any areas where they support the values of this state. And certainly, we want to see growth in our, in our economy, not just for the front range, but throughout the state. And anything they do to support that, we're going to help and work alongside of them. Do you see any promising signs, any initiatives that they're talking about that you say there's promise there? I, I wish I did, honestly. There, there's so much noise coming out of the administration, it's hard to separate that out and say, here's where we could work together. So while not from politics, you have been around politics for many decades. Um, fellow Democrat, Governor John Hickenlooper, can you point to a decision that he's made in office that you disagree with? I, I, I suppose there's one. And I, I will say that I think John has, the governor has been an excellent leader for the state at a time when he went into office, we're in a deep recession and look where we are today. I think his decision around Nathan Dunlop actually was a challenge. I actually agree that uh, Dunlop should not have been put to death, but I would not have left the decision open for the next governor. I think if you have someone's life in your hands, you should make a decision. My decision? would be life in prison without the possibility of parole. And then 
think about the issues that we can affect in this state that hopefully in the future would prevent someone like Nathan Dunlap doing what he did. And I think that's around health, mental health issues. Certainly, he was bipolar. He was off his meds. And that's where we ended with a great tragedy. So you're talking about a specific case with specific mental health issues. In addition, the governor has said that no execution will happen on his watch. Would you make a similar pronouncement, or would you say that death, death penalty is the law of the land and you would sign off? I think the death penalty is the law of the land today. Personally, I don't believe the death penalty is the right thing. So I would pursue, hopefully in this state, changing our law so that we would not put people to death because in the end, there are people we know on death row that were wrongly convicted. Second, we know that the cost to put someone to death is far more expensive than keeping them in jail, looking at four walls for the rest of their lives, and I think they should. So I think there's many reasons why we shouldn't have the death penalty, but as governor, I will uphold the law, and I would like to see the law change. Do you see a thread in that decision by Governor Hickenlooper, which you're willing to criticize, do you see that thread in some of his other decision-making, uh, a tendency to split the difference or always look for the compromise, even if it's not the best decision? You know, I hate to be a backseat quarterback. Not being in the position, not having all the information that he did, I think it would be inappropriate for me to make that call. Understood. Do you think that Colorado's implementation of legal recreational marijuana has been a success? I do. I think we're leading the country in how to do it right. So lastly, you're going to be in a very competitive primary. Uh, I think the last time we had you on Nine News, uh, Hillary Clinton was stopping by your business, taking a tour. You have a good relationship with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Does that help you or hurt you with Colorado's Democrats? You know, I think it it helps me with Colorado Democrats because they had true Democratic values. And the, the reason that Secretary Clinton came to my company was to learn about the initiatives that I've been a part of my whole life around education and workforce. And so there are many things that we agree on, certainly, and, and I applaud Secretary Clinton for her service to this country. The fact that she lost, I think, is frankly a tragedy for this country. Noel Ginsburg, Denver businessman, in the race for governor in the Democratic primary. I understand that you're going to be headed out around the state Friday and Saturday. Appreciate you stopping by here first. Thanks for having me, Kyle.